Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Uh, and um, very good morning okay to all of you. Uh, welcome to Litwell uh, leadership talk series. Uh, today okay our topic is managing impression through social media and we have our facilitator today Associate Professor Dr. Sharmila Jayan Singam. Um, Dr. Sharmila Jayan Singa received her MBA and PhD from the University of Science Malaysia in the field of management. She is currently a senior lecturer in leadership and OB at the Faculty of Business and Accounting, University of Malaya. Prior to joining UM, she was teaching courses such as management, leadership and knowledge management at UB10 and MMU. Her research is interdisciplinary and addresses knowledge management issues, leadership and OB. Her current interest includes the influence of social media on leadership effectiveness, happiness and well-being at the workplace. She has written several journal articles which have been published in Journal of Knowledge Management, Current Psychology, Knowledge Management Research and Practice, Industrial Management and Data System, International Journal of Human Resource Management, Management Research, studies in higher education and many other outlets. She has several uh, years of experience in consultancy projects with agencies such as Asia Institute of Finance on a project on talent management, Perbodalan uh, National Berhad, Felda, Ashi, uh, Consultancy and so forth. She strongly believes that theories from academic research needs to be translated to practice solutions for the workplace. So, without further ado, I would like to invite Associate Professor Dr. Sharmila Jain Singa uh, to facilitate the session. Uh, doctor, uh, the session is yours. Right, thank you so much, Dr. Ilhami. Right, good morning, everyone. How are you doing? Are you all able to turn on your mic? Yes? They are able to, to unmute okay. their mic. All right, so maybe before we start, just a little bit of housekeeping. So in your chat function, you would see that we actually have uh, two links. One is for Poll Everywhere, which we will use in between our sessions. And the other one is for a Padlet. OK, so uh, we once we reach that point of time, I will just refer back to the particular link so that it's OK for us. And uh, throughout the session, if let's say there are particular questions related to specific uh, topics itself, you can feel free to just unmute and stop me and ask questions, all right? So that it's easier to catch up from where we are at that point of time. Okay, so let's start with today's session. So we're going to look at managing impression through social media. So first question to all of you, how many of you actually have social media accounts? Anyone here does not have a social media account. Okay, so I assume if there is silence, it means everybody is here with your own social media, uh, media account, be it Facebook or Instagram or so forth, all right? Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to understand how do we use social media accounts as leaders to manage impressions that people have about us. So why do we need to manage impression? That's the main question. So we will start through this agenda. We will start with the basics. We will talk about what is perception and the process of attribution. We will talk about what is impression management. We will talk about impression management tactics and how do we use these tactics in the social media context, especially in terms of leadership perspective. And finally, we will look at what really works. OK, so let's start with the very basic. When we talk about perception, what comes to mind? OK, so I will just call out names just to keep the session interactive. So I hope that you will participate and share what needs to be done. Right. Uh, I mean, what comes to mind? Let's start with. Um, Mr. Tarmi. OK, utter silence. Right. Um, how about Encik um, Shahizam? Okay, your mic is off. All right, noted. Uh, Shahizam? Hi, morning, Shahizam. Morning, morning. Morning, okay. Um, just share your opinion. What comes to mind when we talk about perception? Perception. Uh, okay. Apa yang disangka? 
Uh, sorry again, apa ya? Disangka. Disangka. Okay, so that's quite close already. So basically, perception is how we perceive things. How do we view things from our point of view, right? So now, when we talk about perception, it seems straightforward. Apa yang disangka is what uh, Shahizam, you know, has shared. So we are looking at um, how do we view things, how do we perceive things, how do we look at, you know, issues from our point of view, right? Now, I'm going to ask you whether is perception biased at times? Anyone? Belinda? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Why do you think it's biased? I find it biased because it's based on our uh, perceived values, uh, based on our values, based on, on what, uh, what you call perspective uh, uh, from us, you know, uh, whether it links to our value or links to our opinion or what we prefer and things like that. So it can be biased at times. Right. Thank you so much, Kamarul. So yes, perception can be biased at times because we have our value systems, our belief system that guides how we develop certain uh, perception that we have against certain issues or phenomenon or individuals, in fact. Right. I'm just going to do a very short exercise just to see how your perception is. OK, I'm sure at certain point of time, all of us would have experienced this, maybe during our undergraduate days or when you know, when we're studying or at work, where you're working really hard and all of a sudden your computer crashes. OK, now I want you to imagine this scenario. Your computer has crashed and uh, it's late at night. You're still at work and you need help. You look around your office space and you only see two of your colleagues remaining in the office. Who would you approach first? Okay, so I'm going to reveal your colleagues who are in the office with you. Would it be colleague A? Or would it be colleague B? Right? So look carefully, colleague A, candidate A, colleague B. Who would you approach with this problem that you have with your computer first? Now, I want you to go to this website, Poll Everywhere. Okay, so the website is in your chat function. Are you able to log on? Are you able to log on to this? So once you log on to this, all you have to do is to choose the answer. Okay, so what I see here is, okay, there's still responses coming in. Let's wait for a few minutes. Remember, your computer has crashed. Only two colleagues available. Who would you choose? Okay, responses are changing, shifting. Okay, so now we are at this stage where majority of you have chosen candidate A. Can any one of you share why have you chosen candidate A as the person you would go to for assistance? Okay, let's speak. Um, Rabiatu? Rabiatu, who did you choose? Okay, Rabiatu is not responding as well. Um, how about for Linda? I actually chose B. All right, can you share with us why did you choose B? Um, because throughout my entire um, experience with TV shows and all, yes. all the, everyone who are portrayed 
as the SB is um, usually uh, handle IT department. <laughs> ah, okay. So the look reflects as somebody pockets, who handles yeah. IT. Yes. <laughs> okay. So so, be. <laughs> yes. All right. Great. Thanks, Belinda. All right. Okay. Um, who else is here? Let me see. Uh, Doctor Call. See you here, Doctor Call. Not here, right? Um, Marsha. Okay, so we got one response uh, from Prof. Prof says B seems not to lack confidence. Seems to be lacking confidence, right? Okay. All right, so we do have different perceptions. So Felinda looked at B and his, she mentioned that B looks like the typical IT guy that you would see that would be able to, you know, uh, handle technical stuff and so forth. That's how, it, you know, IT people are usually portrayed in our daily life, right? Prof mentioned that, no, B doesn't seem like the person who can solve your problem because he seems to lack confidence. What we have actually done in this simple exercise is just this. We have formed perception about individuals based on how they look, right? So we do have our own, uh, as what Shahizam puts it, sangkaan. So we say that, okay, if they are dressed like, you know, with the spectacles, they look like a typical IT guy, they must be the IT guy. But maybe they don't have the confidence, so they would not be able to handle your problems well. But in reality, do we really know who can solve this problem? Can we know for sure that A can solve the problem? Right? So Kamarul mentioned that no. Right? So, okay, maybe if you can on your mic, uh, the chat would work as uh, you know as well. Okay, so just put in your response in the chat. So now let me give you a different scenario. Imagine you're driving down a lonely road. It's dark. It's gloomy, right? Okay. Your car breaks down. I'm not sure if you have ever experienced this, but if that has happened. Okay, so now you have two choices for help. Two people arrive to help you. Who would you trust enough to help you? Okay, so you have candidate A with all the tattoos and all, candidate B with the clean white shirt and so forth. Okay, now again, back to poll everywhere, share your response. Okay, so the response has stopped so for, for now. Uh, majority of y'all have actually gone for candidate B. Why? Just type in your response in the chat if your mic is not, not working. Of any one of you, your mic is working, just turn on your mic and share your answers. Why did you choose candidate B if you have chosen candidate B? All right, so Felinda says, less intimidating to ask for help. So, yeah, he seems less intimidating. So, you believe that the ones with the tattoo looks intimidating, looks a little bit scary. How about those who chose candidate A? Even though you are the minority, what was the reason behind your choice? Anyone? Candidate B? Uh, sorry, candidate A? Um, I choose A actually. All right, can you share with us why, Kamaru? Um, okay, my perception again, like for Linda said before in the movie and everything, B, yeah. it seems to me like look naive and everything, but it can be a psycho. So <laughs> <laughs> the influence is there, but yeah. A is 
it's obvious that like, yeah, tattoo doesn't mean that he's a he can be a gangster, but maybe uh, when see people in in time of trouble, so maybe they they are really uh, good, you know. Otherwise, why they are staying late at night in the lonely road or whatever and things like that. But either way, you know, I got. But then B is that really that I have a feeling that if he's a psycho, then he might torture me or something like that, and I suffer till death. You see, so but A, if you want to kill me, he kill me direct instantly, so I die quickly. Something <laughs> like that. Okay, so that's an interesting perspective. So Kamaru looks at it as, uh, if I'm going to be, you know, tortured, I rather go with A because he might do it fast. Right, but that's a wrong perception. Just because he has tattoo doesn't mean that he's going to be a person who is intimidating, who is dangerous. But you see, normal perception. What we see from the majority is, um, you would see that in B, most of us go for B in the perception that he seems uh, decent. He seems less dangerous, less intimidating. Maybe we can trust him better. But it is possible, as what Kamarul says. Um, maybe there's a possibility he might be a serial killer that looks trustworthy, that you might trust him enough. But then again, it comes back to the issue of perception. So these two earlier scenarios, I don't have the right answer for you because I just chose random pictures out of Google. But the third scenario is actually a real person, okay? So I want you to guess what is the occupation of this person? Do you know her? Anyone? No. No. No, okay, that, that makes it even better. So can you guess what work does she do? Okay, Maybe. think about it. I'm going to turn on the poll. Okay, so responses are still coming in. I'll wait for a few more, a uh, couple of minutes. Okay, so the poll has uh, ended here. All right. So as you can see, majority of your O is still moving. So some of you are changing your answers. I hope you're not trying to Google her image and find out who she is. Okay, so the poll has ended. Now, majority of y'all have chosen movie star. Why? The background seems like a sports event. Hakimin, you have uh, you are confidently telling that she's a soccer player. Why? Hakimin, could you share? So okay, most of you say movie star, glamorous, right? Prof says glamorous. Then we have Felinda saying that she is in makeup, looks like an award show, her appearance. Uh, for a movie star is what Hajar presented, okay? So most of us are looking at her appearance at this point of time, okay? Do, which do you think is the correct answer? Is she a soccer player or a movie star? Nazura, um, you want to share? Do you think she's a soccer player or a movie star? I know the mic is turned on, but she's not responding. Okay, the correct answer is 
She's actually a soccer player. Yes, as Prof said, could be a very pretty soccer player. Interesting, right? She's actually Alex Morgan. She is a soccer player. Okay. What we have seen right now is you trying to find an answer based on a trick question in a way. How many of you thought she was a movie star or a nurse? Because we did see responses saying, you know, it, it was nurse, but then they changed it. And then when more people were saying it's soccer player, then they shifted and so forth. How many of you actually thought since the two first exercises were talking about perception and how we made perceptual biases, you changed your response to be soccer player even though you were not really sure? If you are smiling to yourself, I assume yes, you went through that whole perception process. Okay. Indirectly, what we have done is we have formed perception about individuals. Uh, we, we look at an individual, we put a price tag on the individual, we try to assume that, okay, this individual is behaving in a certain way, so therefore they should be holding certain career, they should have certain qualities. So we know we judge whether we have personality saying, uh, are they confident, are they not confident, are they glamorous enough? Uh, as soccer players, what kind of stereotype do we have for soccer players? They're supposed to look tough, maybe with short hair, maybe, you know, tanned because they're training all the time. So we do have different perceptions that we form, right? So this exercise actually tells us that we form perception about people. Now, the next question I want to ask you is this. Is your perception accurate? I think Kamaro shared earlier on saying that you know, we, we do have biases because we do have our own value systems, we own our own beliefs, our experiences, uh, what we watch in movie. I think for Linda talked about this is what I saw in movies all the time, right? And then going back to what Kamarul said, just because they look nice doesn't mean they are not serial psychotics, you know, killers that could be having this hidden image behind them and so forth, right? So the question is, is your perception accurate? In most cases, you may be affected by bias. We do our, use our experiences. We do look at how we have been brought up. We do judge based on our perception, right? But it may not be accurate in all cases, right? So when we talk about accuracy of perception, it all comes back to the, you know, the perception of uh, attribution and implicit theories. In a lot of cases, when we talk about being a leader in a context, we assume that as a leader, we should do things that are right. But how do we determine what is right? We end up looking at, okay, my perception, this is what is right. So this is how I am going to act. But in reality, you must realize that if we as individuals also engage in behaviors where we make, you know, uh, we engage in perceptual biases. That means our followers, the others around us, would also be able to engage in such perceptual biases when they form their attribution about us as leaders. So when we talk about attribution, basically what I'm referring to is the judgment that people make about us. So when uh, you know a lecturer, for instance, you see your student sleeping in class, we make judgments. Sometimes we make internal judgments. The student is lazy, that's why the student is sleeping. Sometimes we make external judgments. Oh, the student is always a hardworking student. It's only today the student is sleeping. There must be some reason. Maybe they had to complete a particular assignment that was really taxing. So we make attributions about each other. Same thing applies in the leadership context. So when we talk about leadership, your followers form attribution. Their attribution is influenced about uh, by their perception about you as a leader. All right. Why is that so? Because you as a leader, you are actually working in a social context. You, uh, you are known by a lot of people, but you may not know each and every one of your followers. So that's the first thing. So when your followers do not have a personalized relationship with you, they view you as a leader, as a public figure. It means you are there, they know you, they listen to your speeches, they listen to people talking about you. So they make attributions about you as a figure, right? So based on their attribution, they will then decide, should I listen to this leader? Should I conform? Should I buy into their ideas, right? 
And that all comes back to the whole process of the attraction process. Are they attracted to you? So when I'm talking about attraction process, I'm not talking about going for, you know, plastic surgery, getting that attractive look, become, as what Prof said just now, a pretty soccer player. We don't want all that. But when we talk about attraction is they should be able to see the values that you hold on to, the values that you would want to, um, um, you know, share with your followers. You want your followers to idolize as well. So that creates that attraction towards you. Okay, so to conclude, when we talk about perception, perception is there. All of us engage in perception, whether we like it or not, right? In most cases, we may be accurate in our perception, but there are possibilities where our perceptions may be affected by bias. So in the earlier cases, you can see we tend to make judgments based on what we have watched before in movies, what we have heard, or you know, qualities that the person has and so forth. Basically, what we are doing when we form perception and form attributions about an individual is we are putting a price tag on the individual themselves. So we are trying to say, what is the worth of this individual? Uh, do they have certain qualities? So we make implicit assumptions. So implicit assumption is we are looking at, is the leader competent enough? Right? Is the leader, um, you know, trustworthy? What is their intention when they do something? When they post a certain message, what is their underlying intention? Are they trying to show that they are great or are they doing it for the society? So their intention. So again, will I listen to them based on, you know, what I formed about them, attribution about them? Would I listen? And of course, do I like them? So when they like you, of course, the 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 possibility of them listening to you increases greatly. But the like should be accompanied with the trust that comes along with you. Okay? So, why are we looking at perception? What is the connection with impression management? Do you think people always view you as an individual that you are um, believing in? So, you have certain perception about yourself, correct? All of us have that. You have, you know, you, you believe in yourself. You know that you have certain qualities. You know you are capable of certain things. But do people have the same perception about you? Yeah, so one Africa says, no, not really, right? So probably not. So in most cases, if we ourselves can engage in possibilities of forming biased perception about individuals, that means it can also work vice versa. It means your leaders themselves, sorry, your followers themselves would view you in a way that might be different from the identity you have formed for yourself. So that is why it's really important for us to engage in something called impression management, right? So we will know a little bit more about impression management. So basically, when you know people may have wrong judgments about you, wrong attributions about you. It is important for you to set the record straight. So that is why people engage in something called impression management. Impression management is where you are engaged in active self-presentation, right? So you want to enhance your image in the eyes of others. You want people to look at you and say, oh yes, you know, this is the great candidate or oh, I respect this person as a leader. This is the best person I would, you know, work with as a leader and so forth. So that comes back with a symbolic interaction. You portray yourself in a way that you think people want to see. People want to see you in a way, so you act according to that. So you portray a favorable public image so that it matches the expectation of the society and then they would form positive judgments about you. Right. So, of course, this depends on the whole uh, issue of identity. So when we talked about identity just now, so remember I said you have your own identity. You believe in yourself. You have your own values. You believe in, uh, you know, certain principles, certain ideologies and so forth. That is your personal identity. People may not be able to see that true self of yours in a social context you have another image out there in the society. 
So that is your social identity, right? While we would want to see our personal identity to match with our social identity, there is a possibility where this identity would be affected by incongruence. So when we say incongruence, it's because we believe something, people believe something else, right? So for example, if I say I'm an introvert, okay, so I'm relatively quiet, I don't share much, but if I'm an introvert, my personal identity is I'm just shy or I take time to warm up or I process things internally in my mind before I share these ideas. But my social identity might be different. People might think that, oh, she's arrogant. She doesn't like to talk with us. She doesn't like to mingle with us. So then there's a clash between personal identity and social identity. So how do you get people to align the personal identity and social identity? That's when the whole impression management process comes in. OK, so impression management process, actually, uh, it's more challenging in an online context because it's there. It can be captured immediately. And what you post online, even if you try to erase it later on. So let's say you put up a posting. Uh, people started talking negatively about your posting, right? Then you go on and erase that posting. Have you be, are you able to erase that negative impact? Yeah? You may not be able to erase that negative impact, right? Because what happens is, in split second, people have screenshot your posting. You erase, they will viral your your the screenshot of your posting, and it goes on out there, right? So here we are looking at uh, as what Prof have said. Most of the time, people do not realize that they are having the wrong perception about you. So it's important for you to engage in impression management to set the record straight, as we put it. Okay, so. There is a negative perception about impression management. Oh, you are being very manipulative. You're not genuine. You're not sharing your true self. But that's not the purpose of impression management. Impression management is actually to set the record straight, to get people to look at you from the same lens as what you're looking at yourself. So they know the true you, the authentic you. Okay. Of course, there are people who abuse this impression management. They would portray a different self out there in public, but then in reality, they might be a different person. But that's not what we are trying to promote. We are trying to look at how do we align your personal identity with the social identity so that you get the best out of your followers. Right. So just a little bit about impression management. Basically, it's a dramaturgical approach. So Irving Goffman is the initiator of this whole concept called impression management, right? So he said that we are all actors. So going back to what Shakespeare said, the world, all the world is the stage and all the men and women merely players, right? They have their exit and their entrances and one man in his time plays many parts and he acts will, uh, being seven ages. So basically all of us wear masks, right? Can we be the same person in all contexts. It's not possible, right? So maybe at work, you might be a different person. At home, you might be a different person. With kids, you might be a different person. But can you come back to work and with your colleagues, be the same person, you know, as you are with your kids? So it might be a whole drama that we go through. We have different masks that we change according to the context that we are in. And the reason we engage in that behavior is to make sure that we uh, follow certain standards that have been set in the context. So when you are in the presence of others, you want to make sure that uh, basically you are acting in accordance to that situation that is required. Is that a wrong thing? No. Even though it appears as if you're manipulating your image, in reality, what you're doing is you are trying to be socially conscious. You are practicing self-monitoring. You are acting according to that situation. So that shows you respect the people around you. But at the same time, sometimes people may misinterpret the representation of yourself. So impression management is when you are going to manage that perception formed about you. OK, so if I'm just going to ask you this question, just to see a general thing, 
right? When you present yourself to your parents and colleagues, do you have the same uh, re response? Okay, let me just activate the next poll, just to see. How many of you actually have that same consistent perception? All right. So as you can see here, 100% of you says no. You don't have that same idol. Well, then you have about 20 25%. Sorry. So, so maybe there's about 20% of you actually have the same, uh, you know, image that you portray at home and at work. Right? So it means you're truly authentic. Okay, so most of you now, let's say 43. So it's 50-50. Okay, interesting. So when we look at it this way, uh, if you are able to present the same self that you have with your parents at home and with your colleagues, well, then you have an image that seems to blend well in all contexts. So that works fine. But in most cases, in reality, we may have different masks that we have for our parent or family's con uh, side or point of view or in terms of our colleague, right? So how or what do we do? That would be it. So do we engage in impression management? Do we? Okay, can you remember your first date? Kamaru, uh, uh, sorry. Okay, so Rami says different responsibility. Kamaru, when you said yes, was it for the first date or for do we engage in impression no, management? Uh, engage in impression management, doctor. Ah, okay. So engage in impression management. So uh, let's go to your first job interview, right? Did you go through a lot of coaching, finding out how to dress up, what to say, what not to say, how to sit, how to talk? That is impression management, right? So performance appraisal, you also engage in you know, uh, impression management. You try to show that what are your success stories? What have you done right? What has worked out? Organizations also engage in impression management. How do we, what kind of image do we want to share? Do we want to share a traditional image, a traditional business school, for instance, or are we talking about the business school that is moving forward? We are generating income. We are at par with international business schools and so forth. So impression management is there. But what can we do to engage in such behavior? So uh, let's just look at some of the tactics and social media postings, all right? So we're going to look at leaders, social media postings, short exercise, not more than 10 minutes, then you come back here, right? So what's going to happen is you just have to select five social media postings from any leaders. It can be leaders that you really like or leaders that you don't really like. It doesn't matter. But these are social media postings. It can be an Instagram posting or a Facebook posting. So choose a leader that you know so that it's easy for you to just go and capture those um, postings, right? You're going to go into a breakout room just for, you know, about uh, five minutes, right? Um, and what you're going to do in your breakout room is you will go on to your tablet. So I've, sorry, not tablet, Padlet, all right? I've set up the Padlet. So this uh, address is also in your chat function. You can scan this QR code to go to the Padlet. I've divided the Padlet into columns where each column is for each team. So you have team one, team two, team three, team four. Okay. Um, so we will have five teams and the team number is based on your room number. So we are going to randomly assign you into breakout rooms. So we will have five breakout rooms, uh, random members in a team. What you need to do, five leadership, uh, sorry, social media posting by leaders. You just have to copy and paste those posting into the Padlet. Okay. So after 10 minutes, you will automatically be brought back here. And then we will look at what you have shared on the Padlet and we will see what kind of tactics do leaders use in general. Okay? Any questions before we move on to your breakout rooms?
Okay, so no questions. All right. Uh, Umu, I need assistance to put them into breakout rooms, please. Uh, okay, all right. Can you hold them for a while? Yeah, thank you, Umu. Okay, uh, now I will uh, start the room. So you will be, uh, you will uh, automatically go to the breakout room. All right. Um, let, give me a few seconds. So I'll see all of you back at, in 10 minutes, right? Uh, does it work now, Umu? The Padlet? Yeah, okay, I see postings coming in. Right. Hi, Dr. Shamila. Yeah, Umu. Uh, can we give them like another five minutes because just now they can post on the Padlet? Ah, sure. Five minutes, okay. okay. Or worst case scenario, if they still can't post because I see on my site only Team 3 and Team 1 is posting so far. So far. Yeah, yeah. Um, if they, those who can, maybe they just paste it on PowerPoint and ah. then they can upload. I, I think group two is because the member the members are not really in the meeting. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I don't know because they they're, they're not discussing anything. Ah, okay. Mm, okay. Uh, is, so, oh, is this quiet? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so 10.55 should be okay? Uh, I will yeah, call 10 them. Yeah, 10.55 should be okay. All right.
So Umo ten fifty five, do they want to come in? All right, let me get them back uh, in the main room. Okay. What's the question? I think some of them are back in the main room. Okay. Okay, how to go back to the main room? Yeah, yeah you are in the main room right now. Ah, okay, okay, thank you. All right. Okay, so is everybody back? Uh, yes. Okay. All right, so I understood that uh, it was not easy using the Padlet. So my apology uh, for assuming that it would be easy the first time around. Okay, but I do see some of the postings there. So let's just look at some of the postings that you have shared and identify some uh, a basic pattern that you can see. So team one has shared just a photo posting where, you know, he's showing thumbs up, side side, right? Um, team two, you have Bill Gates. So Bill Gates tweet, right? So, and he's just promoting things that he learns through his foundation, other interest. So team three has shared a quote, a quote that reflects the ideology of this particular leader, right? And then team four. Okay, so you have Jeff Bezos, right? So visit, uh, basically the posting is about Amazon, today's visit by our founder and CEO uh, to say thank you to Amazon Fulfillment Center, all right? We are incredibly proud uh, of the thousand of colleagues working on the front line to get critical goods to people everywhere during this crisis. Okay, right, good. And then team five, again, another quotation. So in what you believe in, what's going to happen. But this may not be a posting from a leader in themselves, but it's just a quotation, right? What pattern do you see here so far? Do you see a pattern in any way? We may not be able to see all of it, because we only have a bit uh, basic posting. Okay, let me just get back to the slides and then we will discuss that shortly, yeah? Okay. Are you able to see my slides? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So from what you have done during your discussion, maybe you couldn't share all of the postings that you may have got because Padlet was not uh, an easy tool to use. But did you notice a certain pattern? How did they share their postings? What tactics or what pattern do you notice? They use pictures. They use pictures, all right? So pictures is basically looking at, uh, you know, pictures, you know, it, it, it can share a thousand words in terms of what you're sharing through your pictures, right? So what you're engaged in. So that's one. What else do they do? So yeah, let me get the chat up. Leaders try to inspire others through their view. So that's very important as well. So you talk about sharing the views. So sometimes when they share the quotation that 
reflects what values they hold on close to their hearts. Okay, what else do you see? From the examples you have shared, I noticed that you, they use pictures. Yes, uh, they show their values, means what they believe in, their ideology. So you look at Bill Gates, you look at Jeff, uh, sorry, you look at Bill Gates, uh, you look at Weiner. So they all share what they believe in, right? Some of them and share tips also. Tips. Uh, sorry, again? They share tips on how to success, be successful like them, like Jack Ma. Uh, yeah, so they share tips, right? So they are sharing what they do right and then how can you be successful? So that, that's good, okay? So, uh, right, so Kay has also shared videos related to their actions, their brand. So they're showing themselves in action doing something. And I like the part where, you know, Kay has talked about the brand. What do they represent in a way, right? Uh, Tang, they showed themselves in photos. So basically, when they show themselves in photos, they are engaged in particular action, right? So all these things, they try to show some of their day is just like a normal person. So Felinda has shared that. So that's very true as well. So daily life, we are just like you. There is no gap in between us. So they try to bridge that gap. So good. What we have seen is some of the tactics that has been used. I think one of the things that was also shared in the Padlet was uh, Jeff Bezos thanking his you know, workers who are willing to work hard during this time of crisis. That is also another way of posting things, right? So these are the tactics that have been used by leaders throughout. Okay, so what you have shared so far with us, that shows that most leaders tend to use self-promotion. So when we talk about self-promotion, it's basically a tactic where, you know, um, individuals try to highlight their actions, their accomplishment, what they have done, what are their capabilities, what are their competence. So basically, you're looking at their achievement. All right. So you have shared most of these examples. Now, sometimes there are leaders that don't talk about competence. They want to, you know, uh, depict an exemplary of effort. So when we talk about exemplary effort, basically you want to show that you go beyond your job, right? You're doing things beyond what is the call of duty. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to say that besides my daily job, I'm also doing things for you. So self-promotion and exemplification are almost similar to some extent, but there's one key difference here. Self-promotion focuses on competence. So what are the skills you have? How good are you? What are you good at? Whereas exemplification is looking at moral, right? What are the values you hold uh, close to you, right? Basically, you're looking about integrity. You're talking about your moral worthiness. So if you go out there and you do extra for people, you're doing it out of your moral obligation, okay? So the other post that we actually see uh, so there was a question in terms of difference between self-promotion versus narcissistic. Uh, so narcissist people, uh, they would appear to be more of the individual who boast, who, you know, uh, promote themselves in such a way that they talk about how great they are. We will look at some examples after this and I will show you which type of posting is usually perceived as narcissist in some situation. Right? Now we do have uh, the next posting, sorry, uh, one of the posting there where Jeff Bezos was thanking people, that is called ingratiation. Ingratiation is when you compliment people, you try to create the feel-good factor. Okay, so you thank them for their favors, uh, you anticipate that, you know, based on you talking good things about them, they would like you in return. Now, there were tactics that were not covered in the posting that you identified, but it also happens on social media as well. So you have intimidation, you have supplication. Intimidation is basically trying to create uh, attention to yourself using fear factor. It means you appear to be very, you know, strong about certain issues, or you try to show yourself as a fierce person, that is intimidation. Supplication on the other side is showing your weakness. So if you had made a mistake, you put up a posting apologizing for that mistake. That is supplication, 
all right it's easier to understand if you look at examples right how do leaders really do it so what we really know is yes these tactics are out there how do they do it on social media so basically we are going to look at some examples so as we shared self promotion you promote yourself and when we tested these tactics in a social media context we found that there are three different approaches used by leaders in a social media context all right the first approach that was used is a subtle self promotion it means you do it indirectly you do not tell people directly that i have been doing this i am successful about certain things you do it indirectly where people realize that you have been doing your job or you're good in something but um you are not doing it on your own so example here if you look at this posting you would find that uh he shared that he was attending a summit right and then he's trying to bridge the gap he's trying to build relationship and so forth okay So these are all indirect subtle approach not direct. So this is another example where you see press uh, you know uh Sian Long is looking at you know how he just met uh the prime minister from Japan and indirectly if you notice here he's actually looking at this paragraph so they talk about how they have excellent friendship so he's injecting some form of ingratiation he's praising the relationship that they have with japan how is it moving forward and indirectly he's also highlighting the success of singapore in collaborating with a, a country like japan right another approach subtle approach example is they just put up a picture So I think some of you just shared a picture like just now Said Sadiq where you know he's uh, standing up there with his thumbs up. So you do have uh, people just posting up an article that came out in India today for example in this case. So they don't say anything about it. They just post it up, but when you read about it you say like, oh I should read that article further and then you find out about the accomplishment of that individual. So these are all subtle approach. Okay? So business leaders also use this So they talk about just putting up uh, the picture of their products and saying that it's now available in a certain platform to show that it's recognized in a certain platform, right? You also have examples such as this where uh, you do have, uh, you know, them sharing and acknowledging some of the YouTubers out there, right? So they have incorporated ingratiation to some example. and then they talk about how all these great people are working behind the scenes for their brand and that makes our brand great so again subtle approach to self uh, promotion another example where it's just a picture mahindra has you know post a picture where you know i can actually see my this car in london which means we are also out there in different countries just a picture subtle approach okay Now the second approach is a bit more direct but they do not take credit for what they are doing. So what they do is they focus on results of their initiatives. Okay? So for example, Barack Obama's posting, right? He just post a simple posting talking about number of uninsured Americans is a record low. Right? So when we talk about record low he's not talking about I did this that is why this is happening but people know or they can associate what he has done to this results so just posting that results indirectly shows you that his initiative or his policies were successful right i'm going to share this as well so another example if you look at najib's posting So he talks about how the World Bank talks about you know how great we are we are reducing income gap so he uses that to highlight the results right so another example here just a picture you know we have this save our abc rally he just puts up a picture saying so many people attended so it highlights the results it was a success okay so it's still subtle it is still indirect to some extent but here they are focusing on the outcome of their initiatives so other examples includes bill gates right so subtle approach results 
So everybody knows he's involved with, you know, the vaccination and so forth. And this is the results of it. But he doesn't say that I'm doing it. That's why this is happening. All right. OK, so again, products, they talk about what goes on behind the scene. That is how we get this great, you know, vehicle here. Uh, I, we did this Virgin Health Bank's uh, policy. So this is the outcome here and so forth. Now, the first two strategies under self-promotion that we have seen has garnered enough likes. And I think uh, one of the questions that was asked is, do these kinds of approach impact psychological well-being and the social media users and viewers? All right. Um, well, while we want to influence our followers, we may not be able to capture the impact on well-being yet. Right now, we are looking at the perspective in terms of how does it affect perception about the leaders? And the assumption is, uh, if let's say there is some form of uh, attachment with the leader, you like the leader, you respect the leader due to these strategies, indirectly that would be able to motivate your well-being. But we do not have that direct link saying that if leaders post in a certain way, it affects the well-being directly as well. What we can capture is the sentiment. How do people feel out of it? And what we have found is when you use subtle self-promotion or promotion where you uh, highlight the outcome, rational results from your initiatives, people tend to like you better. So the sentiment tends to be more positive in such situation. Okay. Now, I think going back to the point that was raised in terms of narcissists, people who are very in love with themselves, they are the greatest. They usually tend to use tactics that are more direct. Okay. I'm not saying that all the examples I'm sharing here are actually narcissists, but I'm saying that narcissists usually use more direct approach rather than indirect. But the examples here are not saying that these are narcissist leaders. All right. So what you would notice about direct self-promotion is they tend to emphasize the word I. A lot of times I did this. I, you know, brought about this change and this was the outcome of the change. So all this is because of me. So if you look at another example here, right? So, after, you know, after finishing this, I went on to hold a government meeting. So the meeting did all these things. I requested the wages to be increased as well. So this is emphasizing your individual growth. Right. So if you look at Bill Shorten's uh, posting as well, right, they posted indirectly. And if you watch the video, it's also talking about what he did as an MP. Now, let's look at an example of a narcissist uh, leader who uses self-promotion. So I think that is very true to what um, uh, uh, I think Kamaru mentioned just now. Right. So Kamaru, you talked about, yes, narcissist equal to Trump. That's true. This is one of the examples that we had to find that they use self-promotion tactics. And if you go into his social media site, it's truly narcissist in the sense where everything is about I, I was the greatest, the other person was bad, I did this, I brought about the changes and so forth. So how good is using direct self-promotion? While you have hardcore supporters, they will like you your hardcore supporters will say, yes, we love what you have done. But if let's say you're looking at general public and followers, they view you as somebody who has an inflated image. You actually portray yourself as I'm simply great. I, you know, I did everything. So I'm the only one responsible for the success and so forth. So that does reduce the sentiment that people feel towards such leaders that engage in direct self-promotion. So what we have found is uh, when you use self-promotion, it's good. You have to tell people, uh, especially in our context, Asian context. How many of you actually tell people your success stories? How many of you are comfortable to tell people I've achieved this? So if academician, I've got a paper published in a tier one journal, top journal. It's very rare. Do you notice that? Or if you have got a promotion, do you announce it so much that, you know, you share it 
or you've got an award, it's very difficult to see people actually sharing these things. We Asians especially suffer from something called imposter syndrome. Right? We think that, okay, I've done this, I'm successful, but am I good enough? Maybe I'm not good enough, so I shouldn't tell people about it. But if you do not promote our successes, people would not be able to see the true self. What are the challenge, uh, What are the skills that you have, right? So I see, yes, Kamaro, uh, Tang, you have also shared is yes, it's very, uh, you know, rare. I like the question Afika has just asked. How should we differentiate between bragging and self-promotion? So there's a fine line. If you look at subtle approach, usually your followers, what we found is your followers do not perceive it as bragging. It means you provide evidence to show that, yes, you have done something, but indirectly, and you do not take credit in, you know, all by yourself. But if you talk about direct approach, especially the ones done by Trump, for example, that is usually perceived as bragging by normal followers, not hardcore followers, right? So normal people like us, we are actually perceiving it as an element of bragging. So we don't want to cross that line. We don't want to go out there and say, I did this, I am responsible for this success and so forth, and take and the entire credit for yourself. You should be able to acknowledge people. So if you look at one of the posting earlier on, uh, they are successful with a new product, but they acknowledge the contribution of people behind the scenes. So indirectly, you're promoting your brand, as uh, what Kay has also shared. You promote your brand, but uh, you are not saying that you are responsible for it. You're saying that all of us are responsible. We are good at this, right? So as a leader, it needs to be a collective effort. So of course, you might be the person who initiated the effort, but it has to be done in such a way that it should not cross the line towards bragging. I hope you, I answered your question, Afika. Yes? No? Okay, maybe we'll wait for her response. Let me know if I've missed any part, then I will get back to that. All right, thank you. Okay, so these are examples of self-promotion, right? So this is direct. So these examples is just to say, you know, what we did it, they said we couldn't be done, we went ahead and did it anyway. So they have come up with the product. So this usually is still considered self-promotion. But when you go on to talk about uh, your personal responsibility, that's bragging. Now let's look at the second strategy, exemplification. So remember, exemplification moves one step beyond competence. It's looking at your moral obligation, your integrity and so forth. Right? So uh, exemplification, usually what we found is they might just put up a statement like this. Today, we launched happiness meter, all right? We want to see whether residents are happy, so forth and all. So maybe that's not my job, but I still want to make sure people are happy. I want to know the response of my people, so I do that. So some of them just put purely text-based. So if you look at uh, Tony Fernandez posting, it talks about you know uh, what initiative they had for the East Coast flood relief campaign, right? And what did they do? I go beyond that. I'm not just talking about my business, which is the airline industry. I'm also talking about my CSR. That is exemplification. Some leaders, they use purely photographs. So for example, this photograph, uh, you know, you have the leader reading the story, I mean, reading a story for a group of five year olds, right? Just that picture. And that was it. Nothing else was there, but people liked it. People, you know, uh, looked up to it saying that, Oh yeah, you know, you're going the extra mile, you're still engaging with your people, you're relating to children, the future generation and so forth, right? Some, they actually had postings in terms of text as well as photograph. And what we found again was in terms of uh, the sentiment of people. How did people react to such postings? And we found most of the followers tend to like or tend to have a favorable response when the leaders use explanation as well as the photographs, right? And exemplification, again, depends on whether you have actually carried out the activity. So it goes back to, you know, highlighting the achievement that has been carried out. I think it goes back to the concept of honesty, okay? The third strategy is looking at ingratiation. 
So now ingratiation is where you compliment people, you try to make them feel good and so forth. And in most cases, you will see postings would integrate these ingratiations in between other strategies. So you do have examples like this, where they, you know, they thank people who uh, welcome them, thank their contribution, for example, right? Uh, so when you thank people that reach, reaches out to them, make them feel good, make them feel appreciated. So these are several examples, and this is something that you commonly find across all leaders as well. So you congratulate people who do well, for instance, you acknowledge their contribution. So here he's acknowledging female truck drivers. So these things reach out, thank people for what they have done. Okay. The last two strategies, not used much, but it's still used. Intimidation. Can anyone guess who would use intimidation? Our famous Trump, right? So these are examples that we find, right? Intimidation, um, when you're talking about an opposition leader, right? So most of the time they try to make themselves look tough. So in this case, uh, Bill Shorten, he tried to use intimidation. So he talked about, I know what you have done last summer kind of thing. I know your lies. The reality is this. So I'm aware of all these things. So be scared of me kind of, you know, uh, feeling. Donald Trump as well. President Obama, you're fired, right? And then he tries. If you notice, if you go on to Donald Trump's social media site, most of his postings are along this line, intimidation, right? Okay, and lastly, supplication is when you talk about portrayal of weaknesses. So when we talk about portrayal of weaknesses, basically we are trying to show people that we need some form of help. Guide us through or give me your support or uh, I'm so sorry this has happened, right? So in some cases, you have acquisitive motive where you are just trying to get their support, right? Or in other cases, you have protective motive, means something has happened, you want to protect yourself, so you go on and then you tell them that, you know, I'm so sorry this has happened, uh, and protect yourself. So examples that you can see here is, you know, uh, for example, uh, what we have done in the past, we have fought against the Communist Party, and now we want to make sure that we maintain that peace and prosperity and freedom and democracy in our country, so work with us together, right? So here, there was a disaster that happened in Japan. So you also have the posting saying that we are investigating, we apologize for what has happened, right? Uh, it, we are trying to get the system to be perfect. So you admit your weaknesses, okay? Here as well, um, you know, they don't let newspaper headlines deflect the amazing job that you do. So you combine supplication as well as uh, ingratiation, thanking people for what's happening. I like this particular posting is when you know, Satya Nadella was actually put under fire when he talked about uh, the equality of pay between the female uh, software engineers and the male software engineers. And then, you know, um, when there was an interview and they asked him, what would you say to women who are not comfortable to ask for pay raise? The way he answered the question was very, uh, you know, inappropriate, where it implied that women don't deserve equal pay as men. But when, you know, the, the employees went against him, he put up this posting to acknowledge that he has made a mistake. He actually meant something else. And what he actually meant was this. And then he has explained that further. So supplication. Right now that you have all these strategies, the five strategies that you see as a leader, which strategy do you think would work? Which is the best impression management approach? OK, uh, don't answer yet. Let's see in terms of your response for. Um, let me just get the poll up. Yeah, just a minute. OK, are you able to see this? What's which is the best impression management approach? You just type in your approach. So you have these five approaches. You have self-promotion, you have exemplification, you have um, uh, ingratiation, intimidation, and you have supplication. So what do you think is the best manage, uh, impression management approach? 
this goes back to pole everywhere. Are you able to see that? You just type in your response for that. Okay, so you have exemplification. Okay, so from your response so far, I see that most of you think ingratiation seems to be the most effective. Um, let's see, more, pro more responses are coming in. Let's just wait for a minute. Okay, so it has stopped. Right, so ingratiation seems to be the most effective uh, tactics that you believe in, followed by exemplification, right? Now, my answer would be, yes, it does work, but it also depends on the situation, depends on the content of your message. What is the objective of your impression management? I, is it going to make a difference, right? So when we talk about impression management and its outcome, right, let's move from this. What we found was tactics that were positive, such as ingratiation, exemplification, as well as self-promotion, the subtle approach especially, had an effect on the element of trust, right? People tend to trust leaders who use these kind of tactics more. Uh, supplication had an effect, but uh, if you use too much of it, it affected trust because they felt that you're not capable, you cannot keep on apologizing for things that is always going wrong. Okay, in terms of influence of the leader, uh, you're right, ingratiation had an effect, people tend to like them greater. Exemplification also created a favorable image. Okay, in terms of performance, self promotion had a greater impact. So self-promotion had, you know, it displayed the competence of the leader. So when you want people to acknowledge you for your performance, for your capability, use more of self-promotion, especially tactics that are subtle, indirect, okay? When you want people to trust you, build relationships. So you use ingratiation, exemplification. When you want to show that you have influence, you want to create a reputation that people believe you, all these three tactics would work. Supplication can be used for trust, but not overused. Okay? All right. Now, do you think just by using this in social media, you would be successful? What's different then from social media and from face-to-face -face leadership? If we are saying that these tactics work in this way. Okay, so Kamaru said to a certain extent, to what difference do you see? Uh, I believe that uh, to a certain extent that uh, this social media approach of uh, having all this strategy will yes. work for people. But uh, as you, as we know, like when you lead a, a group of people, your followers come from the various spectrums. So, yes. so you must, you might have like very avid 
so called social media users and things like that and you yeah. also have a followers a bit laggard in terms of say, uh, uh, techie you know i tag cv and all that so with yeah. this you have to use different approach different platform and things like that so as a leader you cannot rely on one strategy like this that's why i said to a certain extent it might yeah. work if you your company or your organization really have a very focused uh, some sort of followers or, or, or targeted groups of people like maybe you are a youth kind of organization or something like that so mm -hmm. maybe the, uh, social media impression is very much important this is the, actually the key to your to your to your operation and all that but if your 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 targeted groups varied you know myriad of of of, of uh, 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 layers you know so so you have to have a multiple kind of strategy and all that but this is the in thing now uh, because we are dealing more with the generation to come so the millennials the the whatever generation that we have so yeah. these are the best way especially in the situation of pandemic so everything must go online and everything for easy access. People, we are not allowed physically interact with, with others and all that. So it's very important on having this, this approach. Yes, very true. Okay. So while we find that this strategy does work across both contexts, face-to-face -face and online, but online there are some limitations as well. Not all of your followers, as what Kamarul has highlighted, are online. Not all of them are tech savvy. So you need to have a mixed approach. I think going back with uh, what K has also mentioned, mixed approach or strategy, right? So some of it has to be online based, some of it has to be face to face still, especially with the older generation, right? But the other thing that we also found from our research, what we did was we conducted an experiment. So I'd just like to share a little bit, you know, what how we discovered all these things. So in our study, and in this particular part, we conducted a, a study based on an experiment. So we used all these examples of postings that leaders have used. And what we did was we created mock leaders, leader tier one, as we put it, right? In a way where uh, they're not real leaders. We are not using real popular leaders. We are not using uh, leaders that are famous. But what we did was we created mock Facebook sites with this kind of postings. So very much similar. Okay. So when we had these similar postings, we had self-promotion, we had ingratiation, all these five tactics. We created this uh, uh, imaginary leader and their Facebook site and uh, we tested it. So that's when we found that, yeah, this strategy works this way, this strategy works that way. But then we realized another thing that happens on social media is people are allowed to like postings. People are allowed to share their responses to that posting. So the responses can be positive, can be negative, regardless of what the strategies the leaders use. So what we did was we replicated that experiment and we included uh, follower responses under each posting. So for example, under self-promotion, we had two groups. One group, we had self-promotion, the same exact same strategy, but in group A, we had positive responses from the followers. So if let's say from five followers, uh, maybe four of them gave positive responses, one of them gave neg negative responses. So we had a mix, but majority was positive. For the second group, we also had such postings, similar posting, but the responses was more negative than positive. And then we asked people to view this mock website, uh, mixed social media sites, and then we asked them to respond again in terms of is the leader trustworthy? Do they have interpersonal influence and performance? What do you think the outcome would have been? Any idea? Would you like to take a guess? Do you think the results depended on what the followers said to the postings? Not really. So K says no, not really. So Kamaro says yes. Uh, Rizwan, you say yes as well. How about the others? Just take a guess. There's no right or wrong answer yet. Let's just try. So. One side, they said not really, but Kamaru and Rizwan says yes. How about the others? Tang, Cecilia, Ramis. 
Not sure, Tang. Okay. Uh, Sutarmi says yes. Okay. The answer is. Okay, Rabiatul says yes. A uh, K says depends on the perception of the viewers. Uh, Rami says yes. Cecilia also says yeah. There's some effect. Okay. What we discovered was something called this. Have you all heard of this? Social media has this opportunity where uh, people follow others, right? So just because sometimes a leader might have posted it, you know, a self-promotion posting, but what they do is they actually listened or they read all those subsequent postings for the leader, right? So if let's say the followers validated that claim, so if I'm promoting saying that, you know, it's a success, the policy worked out and so forth, but majority of the followers says, don't lie. We actually had all those funny postings that we got. Don't lie. You know, how can you say this? Are you in dreamland? How, have you came down to, you know, the, the, the layman people and then people like us and found out that whether this is successful or not. So they do share their frustrations on social media. And the thing is, you can't really control that much. So what happens is when your followers respond in such a way, if it's consistent with what you have mentioned in your posting, then people perceive that you are effective. They trust you better. They believe that you are being honest. So validation of your responses actually mattered. And it came down to the effect of social contagion, right? So, so netizen contagion, I like the part of it, right? It becomes viral. People share. So what people, other people say actually matters. And a lot of times, we being humans, when we see a lot of people criticize that particular leader, even if you want to support the leader, you might hesitate, correct? You might say that, oh, everybody's thinking, let me go and find out more about the leader before I post. So it's really coming back to the concept of credibility. If majority of people are believing that what you do in real life is consistent with the impression that you portray on your social media, then the comments would follow suit and you will see that happening. So if you go to you know, Facebook sites such as Jacinda Arden, you will see that a lot of her comments are actually very consistent. It's consistent with the impression management tactic that she's using. It validates her credibility. So when that happens, people perceive her as an effective leader, right? They trust her better. But if you go on to social media sites like, well, we, we don't need to mention leaders' names. Maybe, you know, it might not work well in our situation. But if, let's say, you know leaders who are not very favorable in our context, you just go to their social media site. They would say A. I'm doing this, I'm very successful and so forth. But if you look at what's happening below, that is an indication of whether people are believing in you, whether there is credibility. So when you want to form your impression, you have to have credibility. To have credibility, there must be consistency with the identity that you display offline and the identity that you display online. If that doesn't happen, people are going to be out there to validate this and they would create a trend where they would question your credibility, right? So this is also known as social echo. So the echo just goes on. And a lot of times we may not know the leader personally, but we form perceptions about the leader based on what the followers have said in their responses as well. So those days, if you look at politicians, what they say during campaigning is what we believe in. Nowadays, things have changed whether it's a business leader or a politician or an organizational leader in general, what you say and what offline and online has to be consistent because people always go on to social media to validate and to get responses from the social environment as well to see whether what you are saying and doing is consistent. All right? So these are some of the results we found that yes, social contagion effect was there. So we're not going to go into detail just to show that there were there were differences based on uh, contagion effect. All right. All right. Um, do you have uh, any points to raise before we go on to the conclusion? Questions?
Okay, so no questions. We will have that Q&A part of it, right? But just to conclude, from what we have looked at, we know perception is there. We all form perception. And to manage that perception, we engage in impression management. How do we build a strategy that we work? The first take home point that you need to have is of course the focus, right? While it is important for us to highlight our perception, you would notice that one of the success factors that leaders had when they engage in impression management on social media is to include other people in their success. So do not be a narcissist like Trump where everything is about me and I, you have to also have the component of other people where you do talk about thanking other people for their contribution, uh, admitting that this was a success because of their contribution as well, right? You have to acknowledge their contribution. So it's not just about you. It's about us in that social media posting. All right. The second take on point that you need to have is this. You need to build, I think going back to what Kay mentioned just now as well, your brand. When you go on social media, you are a public figure. You are no longer just you and yourself. So you need to be able to build your brand in such a way that people recognize you. People feel that affiliation towards you. People feel that connection with you, right? So you have three important things to look at. The first thing is, of course, in terms of reputation, right? People are out there. There are so many people posting on social media. How do you stand out for your reputation? How are you able to attract your followers in such a way that you have a brand name that people recognize with you? You know, they can connect with you, right? You need to make sure that you have a larger follower base. That, I think, comes with no uh, two ways about it. Social media, social contagion effect. So social contagion effect, the more follower you have, it somehow reflects that people believe in you. And of course, there must be neutral followers. So you would notice that sometimes politician, you have followers from your political party. That is not really counted. People want to see followers from everyday life. People like you and me, and whether we are able to relate with this leader. The more such followers you have, the greater your chances of portraying an image that is favorable to the society, right? Okay, I like the example that Kay actually gave, right? And uh, of course, consistency. There must be a pattern in your posting. So a lot of times they need to know, okay, does the leader post every day? The, does the leader post on his own? Or is there an admin team that is doing this for him or her, right? So consistency is actually the key to success as well. So they must know that, okay, I, I look forward to this posting. I know when they're going to post. How do they react when there are certain issues? They should be able to predict to some extent to show that you are always there. You are keeping that extent, right? Now, I like uh, the question Cecilia asks, why do you think leaders still want or should post on social media? It's a risk to their reputation due to the social contagion effect. The thing is, we cannot run away from it. I think going back to what Kamarul highlighted, we are actually in a generation where they are born with computers. So everything goes on with technology, computer, social media. We are in a stage where even in organizations, the, you know, private organizations, when they want to hire employees, they go and check their social media profiles just to get an idea of what kind of person they are. So what's more with if you are a leader? You, if you're a leader, people always want to know what you're doing, whether there's validation. And when you don't have that validation on social media to some extent, it does affect uh, people's perception about your credibility, right? So I think Kamaro is right. Nowadays, a lot of leaders actually hire, you know, social media managers because they know how important this is. I think if you look at organizations as well, they are getting people to manage their social media sites because that's how responses come in. That's how the reputation is built. Okay, so just to share in terms of brand, I'm sure you have seen these leaders. Uh, if you look at uh, Najib, so you ask them, what's the brand on social media? So everybody talks about Bosco, everybody talks about Super Ring, right? So somehow 
that's his image on social media where people you know you talk about the group of people that follow him that's the image that's the brand that he has if you look at steve jobs of course not at this point of time but earlier on people recognized him for his brand innovation and his you know black turtle neck right if you look at jacinda arden most of her social media posts is about emotions you would notice that you know she talks about how happy she was among her followers or how she felt when there was a crisis so her postings and her brand has always been as somebody who is much more maternal somebody who relates with people uh, somebody who is much more uh, benevolent right and of course if you look at trump his image has always been in terms of uh, arrogance narcissist behavior and so forth but they have their brand of course, I'm not saying these are good brands or bad brands to have. It depends on individual perception. But at the end of the day, your social media should have that particular brand that people can relate with. And you can only do that if you have your follower base, you have your reputation to support, and of course, the consistency in your posting. Okay. Now, the third posting, I'm uh, sorry, point would be going back to, I think, what Prof highlighted just now. She talked about how you need to be yourself, you need to be honest, you need to be authentic. So as much as possible, your offline self and your online self has to be related. So what you portray there must be your true self. So that is one important point, being authentic. At the end of the day, if you're unable to be authentic, it's going to be difficult for you to maintain that online persona in your daily offline life imagine you portray yourself as somebody else on your online uh, you know uh, platform but when you come and meet your followers face to face you will be expected to maintain or sustain that online image so it's very important for you to be on that uh, authentic because uh, if you do not do that what started off as a mask may become your face as what Irving Goffman says okay and the fourth take home point for you, humility. I think it goes back to the point that was mentioned just now. How do you differentiate self-promotion from bragging? There's always a fine line. Remember what really works in the social media platform is in terms of humility as well. Okay, we were supposed to just have a short game, but we're not going to go into breakout rooms because I think in view of time as well, let's just try a simple example, social media pitch something to think about let's say you won a prestigious award how would you tell people about it without appearing as if you are boasting about your achievement what strategy would you use tired already would you use uh, promotion? Would you use supplication? Would you use intimidation? What strategy do you think would work? Ingratiation, if I, if I may say, ingratiation. Ingratiation, okay. How would you use ingratiation, Kamaru? Uh, like I'm telling people first, you know, how you get through this uh, being nominated or being uh, what you call um, in the, the, the uh, uh, what you call in the shortlist by the award or something like that you know like yes. uh, you know I would like to you know uh, tell you maybe like if you are um, you are getting an award for the field of your expertise for instance so yes. you be start telling people like oh all this while I've been doing this with the help of you know so and so and things like that you know and then, and then, and then. okay and yeah. then at the end of it then you end your 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 statement with like with that uh, um, I, I've been uh, recognized or been awarded with this prestigious award something that you, that you like some sort of your 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 grateful speech or something like that you know telling people and then how prestigious is this award is you know things like that to show yeah. people and then the last part only then you tell that uh, you you are uh, you are all these supports and all that around you that yeah. made you being recognized with this prestigious award all right very true so i think here you're using a combination of self promotion with ingratiation and it's good to start with the ingratiation because it reflects uh, the attention from promoting what you have got to thanking people first creating that warm sentiment I think a lot of them, Prof has also talked about thanking others for support, right? Okay, agrees. 
uh, Tang also agrees and you know so forth. So we are talking about thanking all these people who have made this possible and then indirectly you have actually mentioned that they made it possible that's why I've got this award right so that is one way of approaching it okay now if let's say I ask you this your proposed strategy failed how would you then post your social media impression management tactic What do you mean by fail? fail? So it means you have proposed a strategy. So let's say I, as a leader, I came up with a policy and then we implemented the policy, but the policy did not work out. So huh. for example, right now, what's happening with COVID-19? So some leaders propose strategies, but strategies don't work out all the time. How do you then acknowledge your mistake and do this? I mean, how do you do that? How do you share about your failure? So Kamaru says supplication, I have more to learn as well. I think that's an approach that is acceptable where you talk about admitting that it was a mistake. It has to start with that because without admitting that it's a mistake, people will then assume that you are trying to shift the blame, right? So for Linda, you talked about acknowledging it, coming up with the next solution. Yes, that would be it. So you're talking about, I've made a mistake. This is my mistake what you're going to do to acknowledge it, to address that mistake. So that makes a lot of sense, right? So what's your next strategy? That is an important point, sustaining trust. I think I like that part of it as well, Kalinda. But if you're talking about uh, some leaders that we do see at present, when things go wrong, a lot of times, especially during election, when you know things may have gone wrong, they shift the blame. So that is something that we should not do especially on social media context, because it's very obvious. Everything is documented. Everything is captured. So if you keep on shifting the blame, it's going to affect the trust that people have towards you. So it needs to be back to you. What do you accept? What do you achieve? Right now, let's say if you have done a community stay service. How do you then post something that you know creates that favorable impression? Would self promotion work? Right. So Felinda talks about highlighting the community rather than me. Okay. So that's very true. You talk about what is the impact. So exemplary, so you talk about exemplification. Basically, you know, you just talk about what was the impact on the community, how the community prospered, the, the us component rather than I did this service and you know, this was the impact of the service, okay? If let's say you wanna, you know, sustain the support of important people, you want to establish associations, what do you do? Subtle approach of self promotion. Tang, uh, was that for uh, the community service or is it for sustaining support? Sorry, I missed that. For previous one, all right. So, yes, subtle approach self promotion works for the previous one. Okay. So, for Linda, you're talking about self promotion with solid proof and history. Uh, would you want to elaborate a little on that? How would you use that to sustain support? I guess, I guess when I first gain people trust, um, I need to maintain the the, the character that I portray. Um, All right, from good. The very so, beginning. so sustaining that trust, so you you maintain that you know expectation. This is the expectation, and I fulfill your expectation. So that's good. Kamaru, you're talking about exemplification. How would you do that? 
um, because you want to sustain support from uh, of important people. So you have yeah. to show your track records. You see, like what we have done and things like that. So because yeah. otherwise, important people usually like we so called somebody or big guns and things like that. They would like to see your track record in order for them to give their support to you. So what yeah. have you done in all that? Your so your your track record is very important. So exemplification, like you know, show, just showing photos and things like that. So that I believe would would helps you in terms of uh, sustaining the the support. All right, very true. So you have your track uh, track record to support what you have done successfully. Okay, and both these strategies has to be used together with ingratiation, acknowledging their contribution as well so that the support will continue throughout the process. So, conclusion. These are your main things. Of course, it comes back to the objective of your message. What is it that you want to achieve? Choose your strategy based on the objective, right? Establish a brand that people can relate with. Do not have a distance with them just because you're on social media. In fact, in social media, you're expected to bridge the gap further, right? And then you have authenticity and humility that has to go along with your strategies. All right. So I hope that helps. And always keep in mind, just because we are uh, humble doesn't mean we shouldn't self-promote. Okay. Do it subtly. Get the message across. Form the perception in such a way that people relate to you. They have a favorable perception towards you. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the session. Uh, I'll just have a short session for Q&A if there's any questions. Any questions? Or if you have any questions, you can always drop me an email later on. We will be more than glad to share the findings of our research as well related to this. Yeah? Okay, so if there's no questions, um, that brings us to the end. Thank you very much for joining this session. I hope that it's it was valuable to you as well. And I hope to see you in another session in future. All right? Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Shami. We'll back to you. And Dr. Ilma Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. oh Thank question. You so uh, Assistant Professor Dr. Shamila for being the facilitator for today's session on managing impression through social media. And I would like to thank everybody for participating in the session. I hope that you have benefited okay, from uh, this session like in terms of knowledge and uh, the exercises. Uh, and I hope that uh, you can apply okay, back uh, at your workplace. Uh. Okay, thank you, everybody. And uh, do not forget okay, to fill in uh, the feedback form okay, for us. Okay, thank you. Uh, stay thank safe. You. Bye. Thank you.